Welcome back. Today I've got a Juno G on the bench and this is one of Roland's, I would say forgotten synthesizers. There is no Facebook group for this synthesizer and it's maybe because the screens tend to break. It may be because it uses a Juno name and it isn't really a Juno. But this one's got a crackly volume pot. Now I did try and test it and record it but I um, lost that footage. But I have ordered a new pot and here it is. So I'm going to start taking it a bit and we'll see if we can solder one in and hopefully that solves the issue. So I just need to pull off the, all the wires and remove all the knobs. This is fairly easy, just, these just pull off the front. I do really like the synthesizer but I don't find much love for it online. And as I said, the screens are prone to failure. I believe there's something wrong with the construction of them that oxidizes over time. So that's really not ideal. So on the back we've got a service hatch and interestingly we've got a slot for a RAM stick. Now this allows you to kind of record for longer times. We've also got a standard Roland expansion and then we've got a PC card. So there's quite a lot of options to expand this. So I'm quite curious to know, has anyone tried it? Is it worth it? I know with the Roland cards they're so expensive at the minute. Like they're close to like £200 for a, a, like a sound bank. And considering this synth isn't worth a huge amount more than that, is it worth it? But yeah, I've took all the screws off the back. There's some that you don't need to remove at the front that just hold on a metal plate. And then we've got access to the circuit boards. Once more, I'm just going to unscrew these. It's a fairly simple job. Just go slowly, think about what we're doing. And I'm trying not to unplug any wires that I don't have to. So there is a few, but these are all simple connectors that just seem to pull out. And then under the circuit board, we can see the circuit board we're interested in. So I'm just undoing the screws on that. And hopefully we can shimmy it out of the way. But yeah, the volume pots on these synthesizers, I do believe is a common problem because the volume control knob is quite tall and it kind of stands on its own on, on the one end of the synth. So if you ever put anything on top of this or anything that slides along it, it's going to catch that volume knob and it is only a little plastic potentiometer it's not going to be able to withstand that load. So I have known a couple of these have the same issue. They're easy enough to replace. It's a little bit of a chew, but let's see how we get on. I'm curious to have a go of one of the Juno X's that have recently came out. I wonder what they sound like. It's Does it just replicate the old synths or does it add a new dimension? Is it worth it? Is it worth just getting you know, a Juno 106 or a 6? But yeah, there's quite a few little cables here. I'm just trying to move around them without disturbing the board too much. There is some screws underneath which are hidden away so we'll just find those and then we can unscrew it and I believe this should be the last one. But yeah one thing I've noticed that there doesn't seem to be a lot of patches shared online for this sim fever considering that it's like got a range of options and like effects there just doesn't seem to be any community around for it. Now maybe I just have not looking in the right places I will look a little harder but the, you know the bits I have found are just people talking about how to repair a screen. So yeah, it's got a little bit of a plastic like cover on the back of this circuit board, but if we move it out of the way, we can just pivot the circuit board round. So this has got like hundreds of instruments on, and each one has got different presets with effects and different filters applied. So I really do like it. It, it, like, it feels like you've got an entire orchestra at your fingertips. And some of them do sound pretty good. And with the ability to do control the cutoff and the resonance, you can kind of dial in some nice and interesting sounds. There's some nice pianos, some nice electric pianos with this synth. So I'm a bit confused of why it isn't a bit more popular. So now we've got the board off, we can now see the culprit and it's this potentiometer here. I have been in the board before and reflowed the solder and also used some pot cleaning stuff, but that didn't seem to do anything. I'm just going to try and replace it. So I'm going to heat up the solder and I've got a solder sucker and I don't normally use these but because we've got like such a big dollop on these tabs this will make the job much easier. So we'll just heat it up, apply the sucker and then it seems like the solder's gone. It's exactly what we want for like this. As these tabs are quite big I'll do it a couple of times. These are quite small, it might, it probably does look a little bit bigger and easier on the screen. So, but it isn't that hard a job at the same time. If you do just take your time, 
and just double check your work. Make sure you know you haven't crossed to solder joints or you know just give the tabs a little poke afterwards. Make sure it looks right and you know I believe that most people can do this. So we're going to flip the board over and then hopefully this little guy just pivots out. It's a little bit of tension there but it comes straight out and then we can drop in the new one. And this is just a drop in replacement. Perfect. So we're going to flip that over and then solder it on. So I just put the solder iron onto the tab and onto the, the pad on the circuit board and allow it to get a little bit of heat and then I feed some solder in. If it's not hot enough, the solder won't flow. And once it is hot enough, the solder flows around. And that creates a nice solder joint. Feel free to criticize my soldering. I know everyone's got their own taste on this. But yeah, just take your time. And I'm pretty certain that anyone can do this with enough time and patience. Make sure you've got some nice ventilation. I don't know what this gas is coming off it, but I'm sure it's not great for you. And there we go. That looks pretty tidy. So I've rebuilt up the keyboard and the volume works exactly as it should now. So this keyboard feels great again. It was so annoying having the crackling volume because it would crackle between left and right channels and would be pretty inconsistent. So next I'm going to play with some compact flash with this little PC card and see if we can upgrade the firmware and see if there's any extra features we can get out of this synth. But I think that's it for now and I hope you enjoyed that. And if you've got a similar issue, I hope it helped.